Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna cover nursing care for your JP drain with a live demo. But before I begin, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and give my video a big thumbs up and hit that notification bell. Let's get started. A Jackson Pratt drain is also known as a JP drain. This is a closed system drain that is placed after surgery, which can be from a surgery within the abdomen or from a facial surgery, or it can be placed near the chest cavity from a total mastectomy. So the function of a JP drain is to help remove excess fluid to help promote healing of the tissues. So the parts of a JP drain consist of your fenestrated tubing with the drainage holes. And I think this is actually kind of interesting to look at because a lot of the times your patients that come out already have the JP drain with the suture attached to it. So you don't see this part. So this is what it looks like. Then attached to this is your drain, which attaches to your port. And then this is the JP bulb. Per textbook, they could refer to it as Reservier. Sometimes I've also heard Grenade, and I'm actually kind of curious to hear what you call it. So comment below and let me know. Um, I'd be interested in knowing. And you'll also see on the bulb, you have measurements, which is 25, 50, 75, 100. I really don't go by that. Um, what I go by is I use a sterile specimen cup or a medicine cup to help measure my fluid output. Then you also have your hang ring, and this is attached to a safety, a safety pin. Um, which will be secured to your patient's gown to prevent it from getting um, kinked or pulled because you definitely don't want it to be dislodged. You'll also see here on this side, um, sometimes it'll be labeled with a number if there's more than one JP drain, such as like number one, number two, number three, number four. You'll see this in the setting of a mastectomy where they may have four JP drains, one and two, three and four on both sides, and it will reflect on your flow sheet so you can be able to um, document the appropriate drainage amount, which the doctors will want to know. And then here you have your actual drain port which we'll go over in just a bit. This is what allows the suction so that way it can control the contents of the fluid that comes within. So let's talk about normal versus abnormal fluid. So your patient that comes fresh out of surgery, they expect to see a bright red color fluid, which is completely normal. This is referred to as a sanguis. Then within the next 24 hours or more, it will convert to like a lemonade color, like a light pink color, which we refer to as serosanguis. And then it will eventually transition into a yellow color, like a serous yellow serum color fluid which is what you will see here. And I use my child's um, color dye to help reflect that yellow color um, fluid. So before we get started, I'm going to make sure my hands are clean, they are gloved, and I'm actually gonna attach this to the port right now. So then that way we can get that suction. So you'll see this is fully open, this is not suctioned, okay? And I'm gonna open the port, I'm going to squeeze it in because I want that suction pressure, and I'm going to put this in here so that way it can absorb. So we're pretending this mason cup is the cavity of the organ. And then I'm gonna attach it with some tape. I'm getting a little clever here to demonstrate. So we'll see that the fluid is containing within, okay? And so when I have my patient and I definitely want to make sure that I initiate the education like right away. So I will be upfront with the patient and be like, hey, you know, you have a JP a drain, the intention is most likely for you to go home with this. So I want to start teaching you like now. So before we get started, who will be the primary person that's going to be managing your drain? And then they will say, oh, you know, it will be most likely my partner or it'll be my friend or it'll be myself. So you wanna make sure that if it is a partner, that that partner is involved in the teaching so then that way they feel comfortable and confident when it is time to go home, they know how to manage the drain and you're actually charting it as well. So this is a serous color fluid. The abnormal color would be like 
pus-like, brown. You don't ever want to see that. That's something that you definitely want to immediately notify the um, physician or surgeon. Also, the drainage amount. In the beginning, you're going to see a lot of drainage, not too much, but enough to where it should start to taper down. As the days pass, it should start to decrease. Hence, when I send my patients home, I always want to make sure I send them home with a specimen cup, and then I also send them home with a medicine cup to be precise because as the, flu as the days pass, the fluid will decrease. So you want to make sure that you are precise with the measurements and you will document that on a drainage output and every facility has a different type of drainage output. You want to make sure you put your time, date, and the amount that you emptied, whether it was in the morning, mid-afternoon, or at the end of the day, you always want to make sure that your drain is emptied. So if we look back at the JP drain, you'll see that it is fully open and it has a lot of volume in it. So we know that it's not even to suction anymore. So we want to make sure that we keep a close eye on this and we have it always to suction. So since it's not to suction, it's because it's full and we need to empty the contents. So anytime I am in contact with potentially like, um, uh, fluid that could contaminate in my eyes or I can get exposure to it. I always treat it bodily fluids um, very carefully and make sure you use your standard precautions and all your precautions needed. So I gather my supplies, my hands are clean, I have my gloves. And so anytime I'm gonna open it, typically I have control over it. If it's still to suction, I will hold the suction in, but in this setting, it's not. And I will point this actual port away from the patient, away from family, because if I were to open it, it can just splatter everywhere. So I'm gonna be very careful with opening it, okay? And you see when I opened it, it kind of like burst out. And so typically, you don't want it to be full, fully full like this, that way it's already open. Typically you wanna do in the setting where it's kind of like squeezed in so you have control over it. So I like to hold it in the setting that it is when it is squeezed in and then I open it so I have more control over it versus just open it when it's fully open, it splatters everywhere. So be careful with that. So then I'm gonna empty the contents. I'm just gonna think simple. I always tell my patients just think simple and just put it all inside this little specimen cup. So I'm emptying all of it and it's quite a lot, okay? And so now it's done, so what do I do? So I'm gonna squeeze this back in, okay? And I'm going to put the port back in. All right, and so then we are ready to go and that is secure. Now drainage, that is actually increasing in amounts. You definitely wanna notify the physician right away because that tells me that there's some increased output and it could potentially be a dehiscence. In the setting of blood clots, um, you also wanna be able to feel comfortable with stripping your JP drain. So when you strip it, it's because you wanna prevent a blood clot. So what you would do is, at the site of insertion, let's say it's the abdomen, you're gonna hold it here. So let's pretend it's like right here, okay? I am gonna squeeze it here and I'm going to have an alcohol prep and I'm going to apply it to the actual tubing and strip away from it. And so this should not be uncomfortable for the patient. If it is uncomfortable for the patient, stop it and notify a physician. Some other contraindications could be an actual, where the actual stitch gets loose and it gets dislodged. That's when you would definitely wanna notify the physician right away or in the setting of an increase in drainage amount or in the setting of an actual infection at the site, which would be like redness, swelling, uh, pus at the insertion site, notify the physician right away, or the patient spikes a fever, like let them know that may be a source of infection. So those are reasons you definitely wanna notify the doctor. All right, we just covered all the need to know information for your patient with the JP drain. If you appreciate the content, be sure to give me a big thumbs up and I'll see you my friend on the next one. Take care.